Black DoorDash driver gets pulled over by the police. Here's what happens. Me. You can't do that, officer, because I call for your Get supervisor. Out. I have my Get license. Out. What is the you reason I'm getting out? Give your information. I, told you I didn't refuse. I asked. Now you resist it. I Get haven't out. refused. I asked to speak to your supervisor. Get out. Sir, I feel get uncomfortable. Out. Please get your supervisor. I don't give a don't what you're touch doing. me. I said get out. Please stop it. Why are you being like this? Is this is how y'all really are? Please stop. Uh, this get is out. all on tape. Please stop. Get out of the car. Please don't hurt me. Why are get you doing out. this? No, sir. I'm telling you, get out. I'm, I'm telling you that this is not lawful. Ah. Oh my God, get that's out. not lawful, get sir. Get out. That's not lawful. The young man had not broken any laws. Put up a graphic of the cop grabbing this DoorDash driver. This happened on March 10th in College Dale, Tennessee. Delani Gordon, a black DoorDash driver, was only moments away from making his next delivery. When a cop passed, made a U-turn, pulled over Gordon for speeding, okay? According to an update that cop has not been relieved of duty, there is no suspension, he has not been put on leave, nothing. According to his attorney, Gordon never believed he was speeding. When Mr. Gordon asked why he was being pulled over and requested for a supervisor, that's when things escalated. You have the right to request a supervisor, by the way. Gordon was fearful in the moment because he's never dealt with an irate officer. In an email to the Washington Post, Lieutenant Jamie Heath, of the College Dale Police Department said the body cam footage would be made available once investigations were closed. They also decided not to identify the officer. The footage captured by Gordon shows only 49 seconds of the incident. But his attorney, Ryan Wheeler, who released the video Friday to spark conversation in the community, and raise awareness said the interaction had escalated too quickly and I agree. Question, uh, questioning a police officer should not be met with an immediate escalation, should not be met with an officer uh, interpreting the exchange as a challenge to his authority, Attorney Ryan Willis said to the news conference at the news conference on Friday. Uh, Willis said the public should be able to have respectful interactions with police without it escalating as it did in this incident and I agree. With the attorney on that, Gordon, uh, who Willis said was unarmed, was charged with resisting arrest and obstruction of justice. Think about this. Think about the insanity of that. Resisting arrest for what? He wasn't supposed to be in a position to be arrested. He did nothing illegal. The cop made all of this up. If it had not been for the cop, this would not have been an issue, right? So you got to think about it this way, because you always think solution based, right? Cops should respond to crimes, to real crimes, crimes that actually put people in danger, right? When the cop is creating the criminal element and then charging you for a crime, and the only factor that lands you in jail is the fact that you had a conversation with a cop. Not because you did something illegal, not because the cop caught you doing something against the law, caught you doing a felony, robbing a bank or still, no, no. It's because you had an interaction with the cop and the cop didn't like how you handled the response. This is why professionalism matters, right? This is why de-escalation is a policy remedy. This is why it's taught to police officers. Unfortunately, sometimes the culture eats the policy alive. So he was arrested and charged with resisting arrest, obstruction of justice. Uh, the attorney said his client is focused on dealing with these charges. Gordon has no criminal history and we wanna keep it that way. Now, let me give you some of the people involved. Let me take you to the DA, put up a picture of the district attorney. His name is Neil Pinkston, he's the DA. Now, what has the DA done? <laughs> now, watch this political, let me kick the ball to somebody else. Without describing the incident, keep his picture up. Without describing the incident or naming Mr. Gordon, the DA's office requested the county sheriff, the county sheriff to investigate a traffic stop incident by the College Dale Police Department involving a driver facing the same charges as Gordon. So let me get this right, hold on, wait a minute. 
The DA's office, by the way, the DA is elected as an investigative body also. Not only to prosecute, but to investigate crimes. So the DA is saying, eh, let's kick this on down to the sheriff. Let the sheriff investigate, let police investigate the police. Yeah, better do it. When the DA is empowered to investigate law enforcement. The DA all of a sudden wants the sheriff to investigate law enforcement. I wonder has the DA done this before for anyone else? See, this is why people don't like the police typically. It's because of these special rules, because of these nuances that don't make sense. Have you ever heard of the DA saying, we're gonna get to the bottom of it. So I have instructed this unrelated police agency to investigate by my request. The DA can't even run the sheriff's office. The DA has no authority over a constitutionally officer such as a sheriff, none. Let's put up a picture of the police chief, College Dale police chief. His name is Jack, Jack C. Sapp the third. Yeah. In a Facebook post March 15th, the department said it will be cooperating fully with the sheriff's probe and added that it is conducting its own investigation. Well, damn, everybody's investigating except the DA. So let me get this right. The city police, they're investigating themselves. The sheriff is investigating the city police by request of the investigative authority known as the DA, but the DA is investigating nobody. Do you really think they're going to render a decision that is favorable to the victim of this cop? Of course not, this insanity has to stop. Ben, thoughts? I mean, my first thought is the fact that, I mean, this man when he's getting pulled over, he trusted the system enough to ask for a supervisor. He yep. thought that bringing in a supervisor was a good option. He was like, I feel unsafe in this situation, so you know what I'm gonna do. We're just gonna ask the supervisor to show up just because that would make me feel more comfortable. So this is clearly somebody who's not like, this isn't somebody that's in the eight cab crowd, I'm assuming, because he at least has enough trust in the system to think that bringing a supervisor would help the situation if he feels unsafe. So obviously, he got done really wrong here in this instance. and. What is really frustrating about this is there this is this pervasive mentality that is the result of police officers largely having a lot of impunity from committing acts of violence, where police officers basically know that they can do violence to you without repercussion, mm -hmm. but you don't you're not in the same position, right? Your job is to be, you know, like obviously very peaceful. And so that imbalance of force right there that the system allows basically lets police officers treat any even question to them as some sort of threat and then they escalate instead of taking a step back. Well said, and listen, I got a friend that drives for DoorDash. In order to get that damn approval, you have to basically go through a CIA background check. All right, that cop knew that man was legit. 